Welcome to Gospel Truth, celebrating the good news of Jesus Christ, the coming of the Savior of the world, Emmanuel, God with us. And now, here's Gospel Truth Bible teacher, Andrew Womack. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I am continuing to teach on a series that I have entitled, Sharper Than a Two-Edged Sword. And let me just mention that tomorrow will be my last day to offer these products. This book is a compilation of 16 of my books put into one. Each chapter is a summary of one entire book. And so there is a lot of benefit to just getting kind of an overview of all of these topics, a brief summary, and then when you get touched by something, you can go back and study it in more detail. We have a study guide that a lot of people use uh, to go through Bible studies and then they expose the Bible study group to all of these different topics and maybe, you know, maybe healing is an issue. And so they will go and study this, the book on uh, God Wants You Well in more detail. But it's a great way to expose things, people to uh, all of these different teachings. And tomorrow is going to be my last day to make this offer over our television. So I encourage you to please respond uh, and, and do something today to receive this teaching because I believe it would be a real blessing to you. Today, I want to turn over to the book of Mark, chapter 6, and I'm going to share with you a teaching that I have entitled Hardness of Heart. And you know, this is one of the things that this was a major deal in my life. I remember exactly where I was when God started speaking this to me, when I saw breakthroughs. I remember that for years I nearly taught on this exclusively and I just saw people change. And this is something that I deal with every single day of my life and you do too. You may not realize it, you may not call it by this name, but it's talking about our sensitivity to the Lord. You know, I, I uh, saw this when I was riding on a plane one time and I was flying across the Great Lakes. I was headed into Chicago and we were up above the clouds. I was reading. And you know, sometimes when you read the Bible, your mind might be wandering and you aren't really zeroed in, focused in on it. And if somebody was to ask you after you've, uh, you know, read a chapter, what you read, you would be hard pressed to even remember what book of the Bible it was or what it was about because your mind wasn't really there. But other times you read and it's just like, Somehow or another, it's just reality to you. And well, this was one of those times where I was reading about Jesus feeding the 5,000. And then immediately after he fed the 5,000, he dismissed the people. He told his disciples to get into the ship and go to the other side. And they came into a storm. And then Jesus came walking unto them on top of the water. And as I was reading this, it was just like I was there. It was so real to me. It was impacting me. And I remember that as I was reading this about how Jesus came walking on the water, I just looked out the window of that airplane and we were up above the clouds. There was a solid layer of clouds down below us. And I thought, you know, it wouldn't be any more miraculous if I just saw Jesus walking on those clouds than it was for those disciples to see Jesus walking on the water. You can't walk on clouds. You can't walk on water. And I just was picturing that in my imagination. I actually thought, what would it be like if I looked out there and saw Jesus just sitting on the wing of the airplane and waving at me? I know some people think this is silly, but I was thinking about it. And it wouldn't be any more miraculous. It's not a greater miracle. It's not any harder for Jesus to sit on the wing of an airplane flying 30,000 feet than it was for him to walk on water. And as I was reading this, I was just shocked. I was overwhelmed. And I came to Mark chapter 6, verse 51, and it says, And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. And like I said, I was just really into this. It was impacting me. And when I read that, I thought, God, that's the way that anybody, if we were really thinking about it, all of us ought to be shocked, sore amazed in ourselves beyond measure and wondered at this great miracle of you walking on the water. And I was just feeling like, man, that's awesome. And then I read the next verse, verse 52. It says, for, the word for is a conjunction linking this to the previous verse. 
for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And all of a sudden I saw that the Lord wasn't commending them for being sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered, but rather He was saying that that was an indication that they had a hardened heart, the fact that they would be shocked to see Jesus walk on the water. And when I saw that, I mean, it was just like, I don't know, I was hit with a ton of bricks. It just, it impacted me. And I remember putting my Bible down and saying, God, I was sore amazed. I was thinking this was really a good way to be. And the Lord spoke to me and He says, if you are surprised by the supernatural, it's an indication of your heart is hardened. And man, that just rocked my world because I got born again when I was eight years old. I had been seeking God my entire life. I hadn't done it properly. I haven't, uh, you know, done everything perfectly. I'm not saying that, but I never, ever in a million years would have considered myself as having a hardened heart. I thought that was talking about somebody who was a God hater, somebody who was out murdering and robbing and plundering or something like that. But a person who loved God and was seeking God, even if you weren't, you know, doing it perfectly and seeing everything where I never would have considered myself as having the hardened heart. And that just revolutionized me when God spoke that the reason you are shocked to think about me walking on the water or walking on the clouds, if you would to see something like that, and if it would surprise you and shock you, it's because you got a hardened heart. When he said that, I had to just say, God, I need to learn then what a hardened heart is, what causes it, and what the cure of it is. And this started me on about a two or three year study, but God showed me, and I'm condensing things very quickly. I really encourage you to get this teaching on hardness of heart. But the Lord showed me that the word hardened, when you use it as referring to like your heart, it means to be cold, insensitive, unfeeling, or unyielding. And man, when the Lord showed me that, I said, well, there's times that I'm cold towards the Lord. I'm insensitive towards the Lord. I'm unfeeling. And there's certainly times that I don't yield to the Lord. I never thought of that as being a hardened heart, but that's what the dictionary defines hardened as. And the Lord gave me all kinds of instances. Like for instance, Pharaoh, if you were to go back and look in the book of Exodus, Pharaoh would be brought to his knees and say, man, your God's the Lord. You go worship the Lord. But then he would turn around and say, no, I'm not going to let you go. How could he do this? He had been brought to his knees. He had all of these plagues come on him. But every single time you go back and read, I think it's like 14 times or something, it says his heart was hardened. And the moment he hardened his heart, all of his reason, his recollection of what had happened before, all of his... It's just like he had, was somehow or another blind. He couldn't think straight. And that's exactly what a hardened heart does. In Mark chapter 8, Jesus gave what some of the characteristics of a hardened heart are. He said, Why reason ye because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? See right here in these words and these questions, he's telling you what a hardened heart is. A hardened heart is not being able to perceive. If it seems like you're dull and you just can't perceive spiritual truth, you can hear me or your pastor or somebody else talk about things and it makes sense at that moment, but it just like you can't get it. It doesn't seem to be yours. It's because you got a hardened heart. It says, perceive ye not yet, neither understand. If it seems like it's so hard for you to understand the things of God, when you read the Bible, you just can't understand it. It's because of a hardened heart. It's not because the Bible is wrong or hard. It's because you have a hardened heart. It goes on to say in the next verse, having eyes see ye not, and having ears hear ye not, and do ye not remember. Did you know that an inability to remember spiritual things is an indication or a characteristic of a hardened heart? And I can guarantee you there's people watching this program that God speaks something to you. You may watch my program or somebody else. God speaks something to you. You know that the Holy Spirit quickened it, but then you go to work and then you get busy. And by the time you get home, you want to study and kind of go back and revisit that. And you can't even remember. You know God said something to you. You were going to remember it, but you just lost it. You can't remember it. 
And some of you think, well, that's just the way I am. I just don't have a memory. Like, you know, I can quote thousands and thousands and thousands of scriptures. And I've had people come to me before and say, well, you must have a photographic memory. You know what? You ought to talk to some of my staff. It is unbelievable the things that I can forget. But I can remember scripture. You know why? Because that's where my heart is. My heart is sensitive to that. When a person says, I just can't remember. I, I read a verse, but I can't remember where it is. I can't quote it. I can't find the reference. And I just can't remember these things. There's nothing wrong with your mind. It's just your focus. You can remember who won the Super Bowl. You can remember all the sports trivia. You can remember what happened in the World Series in 1953, but you can't remember a scripture. It's because sports is more important to you than the scripture. It's because your focus is on that. Here's another, I'm condensing things down to their simplest terms here, and hopefully you'll get my teaching and get all of these things verified. But here's what the Lord taught me that causes our heart to be hardened or sensitive. Whatever you focus your attention on, I'm not talking about what individual pieces of information you may have. You may have some knowledge, but if you aren't focused on it, you will become hardened towards it. But whatever you focus on, you become sensitive to. Whatever you neglect, you become hardened to. It's just an automatic process. This is the way that God made our heart, that whatever your heart is just given to, focused on, in love with, you will be able to remember. You will be able to understand. You'll be able to perceive. But whatever you neglect, whether you still believe those things, whether you still embrace it or not, those things, you will begin to lose them. Your heart will become hardened. It's kind of like a callus. You know, hardness is not something that just happens all at once, but you just, you know, the Lord wants to speak to you. He's trying to say something to you, but you got something else you want to do and you put it off. And you know what that does? That puts a little layer of sensitivity, just like a layer of skin, a callus or something. And over a period of time, if you keep working and those calluses just build up layer after layer after layer, it can get to where nothing can penetrate it. You know, I used to lead praise and worship six nights a week in my Bible studies and I played a 12 string guitar and my fingers became so calloused through playing that guitar that I could take a pen, like a straight pen, and it would bend the pen before it would penetrate that callus. I mean, my fingers were calloused and it didn't happen all at once. It was just layer after layer after layer. Your heart doesn't get hardened towards God all at once. It just happens little bit after little bit after little bit. It's a process. And once you understand what's happening, and once you understand what the characteristics of a hardened heart are, then anytime you begin to start seeing some of these things, like you just can't remember the things of God the way you should. You aren't perceiving. You aren't understanding. You're shocked when you see somebody heal when the truth is you ought to be shocked if you don't see a person heal. You ought to be shocked if you don't see your needs supplied. If any of these things begin to happen, what you need to do is recognize this is an indication of my heart becoming hardened. It doesn't happen all at once. And the moment you realize that, hey, I'm becoming a little bit less sensitive to God than I was, the cure for it is to just change your focus, to stay your heart upon God. Focus on God with everything that you've got and as you do that, your heart will begin to start becoming sensitive again. You can hear the voice of God. You can remember what He's saying to you. And here's one of the things that I learned, and this is from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 15, talking about Abraham and Sarah. And it says, Truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. Now, God had told Abraham and Sarah to leave their homeland, to leave all of their kindred and come out, and he would give them this land that we now know as the land of Israel. And he promised that to them. And this is saying that if they had been mindful of the country they came out of, that's just talking about their mind, their heart, their focus. If they had been focused on what they left behind and what they gave up, then they would have been tempted to go back. So this is linking their temptation to what their mind was focused upon. So this is the great truth that God taught me. 
that you cannot be tempted with anything you don't think. So therefore, don't let your mind think on things that would be temptation and you'll never be tempted. I could be a great man of God if I was never tempted to do anything less. You could be a great man or woman of God if you were just never tempted with any unbelief. But the problem is most of us, see, don't understand this, and we expose ourselves to things that we should never be exposed to. We allow our mind to go places that it should never go. And because of it, then later the temptation comes and we say, why is it so hard to serve God? Because you've been focused and thinking on things that you shouldn't have been thinking on. Man, that is a powerful truth. And all of this, see, is involved in hardness of heart. Your heart cannot be drawn towards and sensitive to something that it hasn't focused on. Therefore, don't focus on ungodliness. Don't watch ungodly movies. Don't use ungodliness for entertainment. Don't read books that about things. You know, like there's Christians that will read books about people who commit adultery and fall into these affairs and do things like this. Now, you never intend on doing that, but yet you will read a book about somebody else. You will let all of these emotions come to you. You will feel all of the lust and the things that they feel through reading that book, but then you never want to go act it out. That's just stupid. Forgive me for being blunt, but if you would never live that way, why would you read something about somebody who is living that way for entertainment? Why would you watch this? Why would you allow your mind to go there? You know, I firmly believe this, and I don't have enough time to explain it 100%, but in this series on hardness of heart, it'll go into all of this explanation. But I firmly believe that I am incapable of doing certain sins today. And somebody will look at me and say, well, that's wrong. You could do anything that anybody could do. I, I agree that I am not superhuman just in myself. I have a natural physical part of me. And if I was to quit seeking the Lord, quit putting my mind on God, quit loving God, quit seeking God, eventually I believe I could do anything that anybody else could do. I believe I could go commit adultery. I believe I could go do those things if I was to harden my heart towards God. But since my heart isn't hardened towards God, since I love God, since I'm seeking God, and praying and seeking Him with my whole heart, I am saying that today it is physically impossible for me to commit adultery. And I don't care what kind of situation you put me in. I could be like Joseph where, you know, the master's wife tried to force him and tried to coerce him into it, and he just could not do it. He left his coat and ran out of there, but he could not do it because his heart was right with God. Now, I believe that if I was to quit seeking God, my heart could become hardened towards God and sensitive towards these other things, but it's not that way today. And because my heart is sensitive to God, you couldn't force me. You couldn't put me in a situation. You couldn't do anything to make me commit adultery on my wife and to sin against God. You couldn't make it happen. My heart is sensitive. And because of that, it makes a Christian life real easy. You know, I've had people proposition me before. I'm not going to go into any details on that. I remember one time in a hotel that the lady that was a cleaning lady came and, and propositioned me. And you know what? I just was, uh, I'm first of all really naive. I wasn't totally sure what was happening. I called Jamie and said, Jamie, uh, what do you think about this? And she said, you stay away from that woman. I, I'm so naive. It's it's amazing. I just haven't ever done all that kind of stuff. But I can tell you that my heart is focused on God. And I, I didn't have to sit there and with white knuckles say, oh, God, help me to resist. Help me to stay faithful to my wife and stay faithful to you. It wasn't even a temptation. Because you know what? I love God. My heart's sensitive towards God. There's some of you watching me today who you say, man, every day it's a struggle for me to be faithful to my mate. It's a struggle for me to have integrity and not steal. It's a struggle for me to do this. And you'd say, I don't want to do it, but why is it such a struggle? Because your heart has been exposed to that. 
You have exposed yourself. You have gone places in your mind and in your thoughts that temptations follow what you think. You cannot be tempted with what you don't think. And you have been thinking on the wrong things. Your heart is hardened towards God. You've neglected Him. You may not desire that. You may want to have a sensitive heart to God, but it doesn't come through just quality time. It's got to be quantity time. You've got to keep your heart stayed upon God. And some of you are thinking, you can't live that way. I've got to go make a living. I'm not like you. I'm not a preacher. I've got to work for a living. Well, first of all, you know what? I've got 500 employees. There is more than enough to occupy my time and to keep my heart focused on other things. I've got, I have to force myself to find time. You know, I got up at four o'clock this morning, went out and just in my spa and I was worshiping and praising God. And I have to force myself to focus on God and keep my mind stayed on God. You're totally wrong to think that somehow or another preachers just don't have anything to occupy them or to divert their attention. I, I have probably as much or more than most people. And, but I'm telling you that you can keep your heart stayed upon the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's what the Bible says you and I have. You can keep your mind stayed upon God. Probably not with the lifestyle that you've been living, not just being like a typical American where you come home and watch four or five hours worth of television every day. You may not be able to do it then, but you could keep your mind stayed upon God. You can meditate on God all day long. You can take a passage of Scripture and let that thing just dominate you for days, weeks at a time. You can keep your mind stayed upon God and God will keep you in perfect peace. Isaiah 26, verse 3. You can do it. It's a matter that we haven't been doing it, but it can be done. And I'm telling you, you can get so focused on God that you don't know how to do anything except believe God. You don't know how to get into doubt and unbelief. You don't know how to be depressed. You don't know how to be discouraged. Your heart, in the same way that it has been probably hardened towards God and it seems like the things of God are hard, you can reverse this process by just changing your focus. Whatever you focus your attention upon, your heart becomes sensitive to. Whatever you neglect, your heart becomes hardened to. The things that are dominating you right now, if they're ungodly, you can change that by just changing your focus to God and you can literally get to where you become hardened towards doubt and unbelief, discouragement and all of these things.